there and welcome to my studio. I'm Kathy Skaggs and I'm here to help you effortlessly make some great clay projects um, in your studio or in your classroom. So we've been talking a lot about printing on clay and how to glaze it. And today I'm gonna to show you a couple of super simple projects that you can do in your studio or with your students. Let me show you a couple of things that we talked about uh, as we get ready to do this. We talked last week about glazing, so you might wanna, I'm not gonna go into it real thoroughly, but you might wanna take a look at it because we talked about clear glazes and then using teacher's palette light over printed surfaces. Uh, so this is the clear glaze, this is one coat, and my favorite, a 50-50 mix of the TPLs and the clear. And I'll show you some examples when we get done with our little uh, keynote that I'm gonna show you. But um, we talked a lot about printing on the surface and now we're figuring out like, what do we do with it? So let me show you some great ideas. We're gonna talk about making some really simple plates with these decorated slabs. Because remember, we're decorating the slabs flat and then we're building the pieces, which is a little bit in reverse of what a lot of potters do where they make the piece and then they decorate the piece. So we've talked a lot about printing flat, but then what do you do with those flat slabs? One of the things that I love to use are these chinette plates. They make a great slump form, and I like them because they don't have a plastic coating. Some of the paper plates that you get have a wax coating on them, and it makes it a little bit, uh, the clay kind of wants to stick to it sometimes, but this almost recycled surface that Chinette has uh, works great to release the clay, and I love all the shapes that they come in. So this is step one. We're just gonna take our slab and we're gonna smooth it. And we've done a lot of that this um, while we've been working together. And I'm gonna print on here real quickly with a little bit of Easy Screen. If you're not familiar with Easy Screen, go back to our previous video and I'll show you exactly how to make that. One minute in the sun, you can make your own silk screens, no frame, they are fabulous. So we're gonna go in here and we're using thick underglaze printing inks. We took the underglazes, we let them sit out until they got stiff, and then we're printing with them. This is one of our screens that we made in a, one of our previous videos about super simple silk screens. This is made with stickers on organza fabric. And again, you can mix the underglaze colors, they work great to print with. So now we've got that done. I am gonna print this last little flowery design, but if you'll notice toward the top of your screen, you can see how the underglaze is still a little moist. I usually do wait till it's a little bit dry to the touch so that I don't get too much over printing. It's not a big problem, but you might wanna think about that as you're working. You can see it's a little bit drier now. And now I'm gonna take another color and I'm gonna, now I'm gonna print these on. I love finishing with a dark color and I love mixing my colors um, so that I get a lot of variation. And I like applying it with a sponge and not a squeegee. It gives me more control, more versatility. It's less intimidating and I use less product that way. And I love the crisp images that I get on that clay. All right, now that we've decorated our clay, now we're gonna cut it slightly larger than our paper form that we're using. And um, you wanna cut it about a half inch bigger because you want a little margin of error in case you mess up. And as the clay goes into that slump form, you'll lose a little of the diameter. So now we're gonna take some plastic and we're gonna put it over the surface and really flatten it so that we don't have any of the edges of the underglaze sticking up that will cause a problem when it's fired. So I really wanna press this down with a little brayer. If I'm not gonna use the, right, the clay right away, I put plastic on both sides and leave it for a couple of days until I'm ready to use it. This is a super simple trick. Go around it with your finger and clean that edge before you construct the plate. 
So now we can put the plate, you want to feel up under the edge and you want to get it centered, but this is really why you cut it a little bit bigger. So if you're off, you can trim it. Take your paper plate, cut off or press up that little bit of a rim so it doesn't make a crease and really push down and take it off, remove the plastic, voila. Oh my gosh, they are so great. I love these things. But this is the hard part with working with clay. Sometimes you look at that edge and you're like, oh, I love the whole print. I love the way it went in the plate. I hate that border, that crummy edge around there. How do you fix it? Don't do it while it's wet. Don't do everything with clay when it's in a moist state. Let's let it set up a little bit and let's use a sure form on it. This is one from the hardware store. Uh, Cheryl Ribs also makes a really great one. But it, when it's leather hard, before it's bone dry, after it's wet, but before it's bone dry, go in and shave off the edges. This is much more efficient than using a fettling knife because if you use a fettling knife, it wants to kind of cut into it and pretty soon you, it could look pretty choppy. The other secret that I do is this. I take, when clay is leather hard or bone dry, I do this a lot even when it's bone dry, I take a green scrubby, a wet one, and I go around the edge, and this really finishes it off. It gives a great edge. I do go all the way around, and then I press it with my finger to give that really nice clean edge. And then when you look at it, when it's done, look how great that edge looks. It's all in how you finish it up. But let's say you want to make a little oval plate, but you don't have any china plates, and you don't want to go to the store. This is your other option. You can take a rectangular sheet of construction paper or any kind of paper that you have on hand and cut it to about the size that you want this oval. But ovals are difficult to cut, especially for students. So fold it in half and in half again and just trim off some of the extra. I could have cut it into a fancy shape, but I just did an oval. And then take a fettling knife and cut around this shape. Remove your excess clay and do what you did last time because you want to preserve the surface. You want that design to stay as it is. So put your plastic on it, roll it, clean your edges again. Now the magic happens. You've protected the surface. So now you can go in there and bend that up with your thumb on the inside and just go around. You might want to go around it more than once to give it a really good shape. Remember, it can be very even or you can make it kind of wavy. It just depends on what you want. But you don't have to have a fancy form to make some great pottery shapes. Go in there, clean the edges. I love using plastic wrap on the edge of all my projects because it really gives it a finish, a really a finished edge, which I think makes it look great. And it's really easy to do and you really really makes it look great. But sometimes no matter how much you try, you it's not working out for you, so shave some off. If you make it a little bit higher than what you want or bigger than what you want, you can kind of plan to remove some of that off of there. And then once you've done that, just like we did before, clean the edges. And again, I do this between leather hard and I even do it bone dry. I often did it with students around the top of coil pots or any type of an edge that really needs a finishing touch. And then go over it with your finger and smooth it. And wow, you have just made two fabulous plates that are ready to go. Remember, when you build these in the chinette plate, like that one on the bottom, you can just leave it in there and then um, take it to the kiln room. You can also add some extra color if you decide you want to. Let's look at a couple of these, a couple of things I have to show you. This is one that I did, you might have been with us last week when we did the glazing. Um, and this is not the exact same plate, plate, but similar. But this is what you're looking at. We, I love these teacher's palette light glazes because they're translucent and the and they work great over texture. So what you're looking at here is a clear glaze over this part 
This can be LG10 or F10, either one. They're both great clear glazes. This is one coat of the Teacher's Palette Light. So I just put one coat. What I like about Teacher's Palette Light is it adds another layer of color. You don't have to have that white background without students painting around shapes. And then this has an additional coat of sapphire on it. So this I painted from here all the way over and then I overlapped the sapphire here. You can see it's much darker. To me, it's a little too dark. When you add three coats of teacher's palette, it looks like this. I mean, the color is super rich and it is fabulously great. But my favorite when I'm printing is to mix it 50-50 with the clear with 50-50 with the clear glaze and I get this beautiful look. You can also put one coat of the teacher's palette light and one coat of the clear over the top if you don't want to mix. I find it's not as translucent and I don't like it quite as much. So I hope you learned one new thing that will help you in your studio or your classroom as we've been together. So long.